All right, so now we're going to take what we learned with molecular orbitals and apply it to what we call hybridization. So hybridization is just the mixing of orbitals, but instead of something like HF, where we're talking about two atoms forming a molecule, hybridization deals with mixing of orbitals uh, for the same atom. So we're mixing orbitals within the same atom. And so this is kind of what this would look like from um, a same, the, from this uh, energy point of view, where um, we are essentially taking the uh, something that has two s and two p, and the two p and the two s from that atom could actually hybridize together. Uh, to mix orbitals from the same atom. And so spatially, what this might look like for the S and P are kind of shown here. So you're, um, kind of, this is kind of what uh, just some of the orbitals might look like. All right, so to start with, let's look at what we call SP3 hybridization. So this can happen in silicon and th uh, things with a similar valence structure to silicon. But this has uh, four lobes in a tetrahedral arrangement and the bond angle happens to be 109 degrees. So what happens here, if we wanna look from the kind of the similar point of view to um, the energy diagrams we saw last, um, silicon has three um, S, 2, 3p, 2. So in in all, there can be, there are three orbitals for p and one orbital for s. And so the name sp3 comes from the fact that all four of those, the one, one of the, the only s orbital and three of the p orbitals are all going to hybridize together. So that's where we get the name sp3. So 1s, uh, 3p. And so when those merge together, uh, it elevates the energy of the 3s and it lowers the energy of the 3p. So it's kind of intermediate. So you can see here, this is kind of intermediate to these three. And we take the total four electrons that we have for silicon in those four orbitals and spread them evenly across. So the idea here is that we have four orbitals, but they're all half filled. And so when silicon in this sp3 hybridization happens, each one of these um, orbitals is half filled, and those correspond to the lobes. We have four lobes, right? And each of them has one electron apiece. And the idea here is that these are obviously half filled, so they're going to want to bond with something else in a similar arrangement. So that, you know, you can talk about this in isolation, but it has to be bonded to something else, right? So we're gonna talk about what happens when we have this um, uh, with an adjacent atom. And so um, that's basically, so this is what the sp3 looks like in a little bit more detail. So we have um, this type of hybridization for carbon and silicon, and we're gonna see that it leads to what we call the diamond cubic structure. So the uh, 2s, for carbon or the 3s for silicon um, is spherical like this. And then when you merge it with the, the two Ps in the X, Y, and Z configuration, uh, you get mixing, you get that tetrahedral uh, hybrid orbitals. And again, keep in mind that tetrahedral shape that you see and how close that looks to the um, diamond cubic structure in a similar tetrahedral arrangement to the um, sp3. All right, so this is a little confusing at first, but we're going to work through this. But um, I want to talk about diamond and, and similar uh, materials, so it could also be for uh, silicon. Um, diamond is uh, an insulator, an electrical insulator, you might be aware of, and that's because we have uh, sigma orbitals that are filled and the anti-sigma, the sigma star, the antibonding orbital is unfilled. So let's look at 
carbon and then work our way up to diamond. So uh, this diagram is, again, one of those energy diagrams. And if we just look at this most right thing over here, this is carbon. Uh, it has two 1s, uh, 2s2, and then 2p2. And so these are the p orbitals which are all at the same energy level, the s at the same energy level, and then this way down here. So this doesn't really factor in. When we hybridize carbon, so we have sp3, again, all of these uh, go to the same energy level. Again, there's little differences here, but they're all at the same energy level. And since we had four electrons, each one of those sp3 orbitals has one electron. And again, those are half filled. So when sp3 carbon bonds with other carbons, which is what we're gonna see here in the next one, then we're going to basically form a sigma bond and a sigma star bond, the bonding and antibonding, um, and that will account for eight orbitals. And since we have eight electrons, then the eight electrons are going to the bonding, and then we'll have a fill, uh, so unfilled uh, here. So that's why it's an insulator, right? Because this, which we think of as the um, valence um, gel, um, is completely filled, whereas this is what we kind of think of as the uh, conductive uh, band is completely empty. So there are no free electrons, as we call them. Um, so that's what we kind of see here. So you can kind of ignore this solid for, for a second, but that's kind of working from uh, carbon in its um, sort of um, unexcited state, hybridized state, and then hybridized and bonded uh, in this case. So think about that, um, what we just did. Uh, so obviously we just, um, we just worked with carbon and an sp3 hybridization. So ignore this part. But what I want you to do now is uh, think about the next hybridization that we're going to talk to talk about, which is sp2. So see if you can draw or sketch a similar similar energy level diagram for carbon, kind of working from carbon and then hybridized as this sp2, and then what it looks like bonded to. So see if you see how far you get with that on the on the quiz. Pause the video and come back, and we will discuss. Um, hybridization and SP2 in the next module.